skill. Be forewarned if you haven't been already, the hottest thing in the 12 and under set is coming soon to a theater near you. Pokemon the movie joins Pokemon the video game and Pokemon the trading card as must-sees and must-haves. To start us off tonight, NBC News correspondent Colleen Dominguez on the craze that has now hit Hollywood. The Pokemon craze started in Japan in 1996 with the release of Red and Green for the Game Boy. Pokemon was created by Satoshi Tajiri and developed by Game Freak. Satoshi as a kid used to collect bugs and I guess that sort of stayed with him because Pokemon's all about capturing monsters just like he caught bugs as a kid. Uh, Pokemon is short for Pocket Monsters and in 1998 it took over North America and then in 1999 it took over the UK and Europe. Hey little buddy, want a ride? Pikachu! Yeah, whatever! <laughs> I'll be right back! Where can you catch all 150 Pokémon? Gotcha! On your Game Boy, that's where! Pokémon for Game Boy is here! With both packs, you can catch them all! I'm quite surprised that the game was released in UK here in 99, uh, because I always thought it was earlier than that, but no, it released in the UK in 1999. And yeah, talk about a craze. This was unbelievable. Pokemon was everywhere. No matter who you were, whether you liked it or not, you knew what Pokemon was. It literally took over everything. Every school ground, every everything, just it took over completely. So the games that were released in North America and Europe uh, weren't red and green, it was red and blue. I'm not really sure why, but, um, but yeah, we got red and blue and I think Japan eventually did get, I think it's a year later after Red and Green came out, they did get Blue as well. Um, but yeah, we got Red and Blue and the first one I ever picked up was Pokemon Blue. I remember going to the shops at my local Woolworths, picking up the game because the anime had just came out. So I was sort of like, I knew what Pokemon was, but this game had come out as well. So I needed to get it. So I remember walking home after buying it and looking at the box for Pokemon Blue and seeing that Blastoise on the front. And just I was literally just staring at it all the way home thinking, oh my god, what is this game going to be like? So I had my uh, my purple Game Boy Color and I stuck the game in and I was hooked from there. The anime had captured my attention. Uh, I remember discovering it on Sky One in, early in the morning on its premiere date and I just I kind of fell in love with it. And then when that game came out, it just exploded. It just fired my imagination and I started drawing my own monsters and stuff. And it's crazy because I was... 13, 14 at the time, so I was a bit older. It wasn't really the demographic for the game, but it really caught my attention and just fired my imagination completely and just took over my brain. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I played Blue. I picked Squirtle for my first Pokemon, being my favourite Pokemon of all time. Now I even have a tattoo of a Squirtle playing my purple Game Boy colour, playing Pokemon Blue on it. <laughs> So at school, all anyone was ever talking about was Pokemon Red or Blue. Which one did you have? Which Pokemon were in each one? And um, would you want to trade with your friends and stuff? I didn't start trading until Gold and Silver because I didn't have a trading cable. I didn't know anyone else who did have the link cable either. But oh, I used to play that game so much, just adventuring, and it was so amazing playing the um, playing the game at the same time as watching the anime. Because sometimes I'll see a Pokemon on the anime. And I think, oh, I haven't seen that Pokemon yet. Then I'll start playing the game again. I'll see that Pokemon. I'm like, oh my god, there it is. And I'll capture it. Or I'll find one. Because I remember finding a Geodude in uh, Mount Moon on Pokemon Blue. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And then I saw it on the anime. I think it was the um, episode with Brock and his gym. And it was just it was amazing just discovering it all at the same time. And just this new craze thing. Just capturing these monsters and training them and leveling them up. And... Like I said, it really fired my imagination, and from then on, I was drawing all sorts of different monsters and creating stuff, and I really, I just, I fell in love with it completely. And the anime, again, like I said, the games weren't the only thing. There was the anime as well. The anime was lots of fun. I really loved it. Watched, I watched it all the time. Had the VHS tapes to watch as well, and I just, it was just crazy how much Pokemon just took over all of our lives in the, the late '90s. It was absolutely insane. And then, of course, the biggest thing most people remember Pokemon for is the trading cards. Are you ready to be the ultimate Pokemon Master Trainer? Yes, I think I am. Then join the Pokemon Trading Card Game League. 
You'll do awesome activities! Learn wicked strategies, earn killer badges, and meet new friends as you begin your journey to become a Pokemon Master Trainer! To find out more about the Pokemon Trading Card Game League, log on to Wizards.com. Go forth and be a master! Now, I like the trading cards. I did collect them. Like, with everything Pokemon, I was just Pokemon crazy, so I had, you know, the cards. I got the booster packs, I remember getting fossil packs, and all the other different ones. Uh, so yeah, I had quite a lot of Pokemon cards, but it wasn't my real passion. I was more into the game and the anime, and anything else Pokemon, but um, the trading cards were sort of just a nice little bonus for me. But everywhere else, just like, they were even banned in playgrounds and stuff, because people was fighting over them, and... It was absolutely insane, and you, it's weird with Pokemon, because it was the only like big craze I remember where you made friends out of nowhere. So I remember just walking down the street and buying a booster pack, and then some kid called me over, and he had a booster pack as well, so we opened ours together, and we looked at each other, and we traded a few cards over with each other, and then he went into his house and brought all his cards out to show me, and I had this new little friend just for a day, never saw him ever again. But it kept happening. Some of them say, oh, do you collect Pokemon cards? And they show me their ones, I'll show them mine. And it was just, it was really amazing where you could just meet these random people and talk about this thing you love so much together. And yeah, Pokemon trading cards just took over. Uh, I did play the game a few times with my sisters as well, made my own deck and stuff, and it was really fun. I just had, I've got a lot of nice memories of the trading cards, but it wasn't my main focus with Pokemon. I was more, like I said, I was more into the game and the anime. Pokemon are everywhere. They're invading. Each with powers more awesome than the next. Pokemon are burning with flame power. Their whirlwind power blows them away. Oh, no. There's nowhere to hide. Yikes! Can they be mastered? Pikachu? Yes. The more Pokemon you catch, the more powers you gain. You can put Pokemon power in your pocket. Gotta catch them all. Pokemon Ball Blasters, Battle Figures, Power Bouncers, and Talking Pokemon, each sold separately from Hasbro. So another thing was the toys, some based on the anime, some just random pieces of merchandise. As you can see here, I've got quite a few Pokemon toys. There's plushies, obviously the games at the bottom. There's like plastic toys, there's toys that like speak, there's some that light up. There's all sorts of different, there's Pokemon Monopoly as well. Everything you could think of that existed as a toy became a Pokemon toy as well. So you had like spinner things, kind of like Beyblades, but Pokemon, just stick Pokemon on anything, and then there you go, it's a po Pokemon toy. So, so the toys I liked the most were the minifigures. They were really cool. I used to pretend to do battles and stuff with them. And uh, some of them you get with some of the characters in the animes. Like if you got Ash, you get a Pikachu with it, and Brock, you get like I think it was a Geo dude and um, and something else, Golem, I think. And it was just crazy. And they had the marbles, Pokemon marbles. So there was Pokemon anything. I had the marble shooter, I still got the marble shooter, and one of my favourites is the Pokedex, literally the Pokedex from the anime you could have, and you open it up and inside is all the data on all the different types of Pokemon, their height, their weight, everything about them so you can go around, and I remember me and my friend Stee uh, walking through the woods, uh, pretending to be Pokemon trainers, and we'd have our Pokedexes with us, and we'd be scanning for different Pokemon, and some of our friends would pretend to be Pokemon, and stuff like that, and Ah, oh, it was so much fun. Like I said, it literally took over people's lives. They wanted to be Pokemon trainers when they grew up, and Pokemon was everything. There was Pokemon games, there was Pokemon toys, there was Pokemon trading cards, there was the Pokemon anime. There was even a Pokemon live show. Uh, never heard of this until a few years back, but yeah, and, and it must have been in America, a Pokemon live show. Uh, that happened. I would have loved to have seen it. It's probably absolute rubbish. Attention Pokemon fans. Get ready for Pokemon Live at the Fox Theater. Now you can be there as all your favorite characters come to life in this on-stage musical adventure. It's the only place to see a brand new Pokemon with amazing powers. You can meet Brock, Misty, Ash, and of course, Pikachu. As the action hits the stage at the Fox Theater. Wanna catch them all? Gotta catch it live. Pokemon Live! Like I said, it was everywhere, just everything was Pokemon. There was the Pokemon music with the albums. Um, one of my favourite albums when the Pokemon craze was around was To Be A Master, the Pokemon album. I still know the words to pretty much all the songs in it. I absolutely loved it. And there was like the Pokemon movie soundtrack and then of course, like I said, the Pokemon movie. I went insane for the Pokemon movie. I remember it be seen there. I can't remember what movie I was seeing, but I remember seeing the trailer for it. I couldn't believe it existed. It's like, oh my god, there is a Pokemon movie coming out. It can't get better than this. 
and it looked amazing and I went to the cinema and I got a free Pokemon card when I went to see it because every time you bought a ticket you get a Pokemon card. Shocking, bubbling and beaming and on Wednesday November 10th you can catch them all in theaters for the first time. Pokemon, the first movie, plus the all-new short Pikachu's Vacation, playing before Pokemon, the first movie. Together, only in theaters, Wednesday, November 10th, both rated G. So I went so many times to see that movie, not just for the Pokemon cards, but I just, I loved it. Like I said, I was living and breathing Pokemon. I'd wake up and play Pokemon, or collect Pokemon, I'd go to school and be talking about Pokemon. There's everything was Pokemon, we get the Pokemon magazines and all sorts of things. So yeah, the movie, I absolutely loved the movie. And I saw it so many times at the cinema, and I just kept thinking about it. And I remember one of the first DVDs I ever bought was on, I think it was around Halloween, I took my sisters out trick-or-treating, and went to Blockbusters and bought Pokemon, the movie, day one when it came out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's when it came, around the time it came out, anyway, because I remember it being Halloween, but I could be completely wrong, but I just remember getting it and being so excited. And the first thing I actually did was listen to the director's commentary for some reason. And it's a really good one. It's one of my favourite director's commentaries now. I love it. And as well as the Game Boy Pokemon games, there was Nintendo 64 games, and it's the only reason I wanted a Nintendo 64 was to play Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Stadium. So I remember getting a, a lovely... I think, it was, I think it was called Red Melon or something like that, or just Red um, Nintendo 64 for my birthday and getting Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Snap and oh my god, Pokemon Snap is so weird and unique and quirky, absolutely love it and Pokemon Stadium, I don't know how much I've played that I still got the very copy I got for my birthday back in the day and then eventually I got Pokemon Stadium too but I love Pokemon Stadium the fact that you had the game pack as well, so you can play your Pokemon games, like I got yellow eventually. I actually walked four miles, four or five miles, um, to find Pokemon yellow, because I didn't have it at my local shop, so I walked all the way to the town over to get Pokemon yellow. But um, yes, yeah, so you can play Pokemon red, blue and yellow on your TV now with the game pack, plugging it into um, the Nintendo 64 um, controller. And with Pokemon Stadium, you can play that, or you can transfer your Pokemon onto the game and battle in 3D. And it was just mind-blowing you could do something like that. So, yeah, just those games as well. And then eventually, more games came out. You had Gold and Silver came out. And then after that, Game Boy Advance games like Ruby and Sapphire came out as well. And there was more movies that came out. I saw the first three at the cinema. Uh, one and two are probably my favourites. But it just kept happening. Like it started in the '96 in Japan, and then '99 for us, and well, for for Europe, and then it just kept going. I thought maybe it's just a craze that'll last like a year or two, but I'm loving it. And still now, it's not as it's not as big of a craze as it used to be. But still, Pokemon is a huge thing, and we've got new games coming out soon. We've still got toys. We've still got the anime. We've still got the trading cards. We've still got everything. It's been over 20 years. And we've still got all this stuff. Like I said, it's not as big and massive as it used to be, but it's still got a huge following. But being part of that Pokemon craze when it first hit us was so amazing. I've never been a part of something like that. And you can, like I said, you can make friends through it and just anyone you could talk to. It was so nice to be part of something so big and crazy. Just like some people were part of the, the Spice Girls craze or the Beatles craze back in the day and the Cabbage Patch dolls and... A Furbies, any other kind of craze, but this one, this was something different. It wasn't just a random toy that was big for one Christmas. This is something that was, it was everything. Like I said, it was a game, it was a toy, it was an anime. It was, it was everything. And we just absorbed all of it and just were obsessed with it. I remember being obsessed watching every episode of the anime, talking to my friends about all the different things and pretending to be a Pokemon trainer and playing Pokemon with my friend Steve and just talking about it constantly and drawing our own Pokemon and thinking oh we can design our own game and we can make a Pokemon comic and we can do this and that and like I said it was it was just such a great thing for your imagination to go wild with because I'd never experienced something like this before like I'd played some RPGs before but uh, this one I don't know it did something different to me the fact that you could capture these little monsters and choose which ones you like the most and which types you like the most and then make your own little team and fight other people and it's just 
It was something completely different and I'm so happy to have been part of this huge craze that swept the whole entire world. I remember just no matter where you went there was a Pokemon poster or there were some toys or there were even like, like markets there was like knockoff stuff and fake things everywhere just Pokemon was everything. I remember walking around Woolworths and there was whole aisles of Pokemon toys just everyone I wanted all of them because it was just so amazing and it was really cool seeing like, all the Pokemon games sealed on a big shelf going across in my shop and uh, it's just it was such an amazing thing and but I still obviously I still love Pokemon to this day but it was just it was such a special thing being part of that huge craze back in the late 90s so yeah I'll always remember being part of that big craze in the 90s of Pokemon one of my favorite memories ever is just being swept up in that magical world of those pocket monsters that has become a global marketing phenomenon. Pokemon has captured the imagination of children around the world and billions and billions of dollars from their parents' wallets. It's now so pervasive schools have banned Pokemon in the playgrounds. But while adults might be mystified, might tut-tut about unhealthy obsessions and manipulation, there's no escaping Pokemon, the biggest thing for kids since Mickey Mouse.